Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues, uh, in this talk, uh, I want to express uh, what we understand and what we learn from uh, so-called low-grade uh, gliomas. Uh, when we say low-grade gliomas, we do understand uh, grade one and two glioma. Uh, although some of the grade one gliomas have distinct clinical behavior, when we say low-grade glioma, we do understand mostly grade two gliomas. Uh, it can be a diffuse type like this. We do perform, uh, we used to perform stereotactic biopsy, then send the case to radiotherapy. But these cases, which we called focal type, uh, is our uh, subject uh, of my talk uh, today. Uh, when we open the Jura, we do see enlarged gyri and color change. Uh, and uh, in the past, we thought that these tumors are localized tumors. Uh, and we had some common beliefs in the past, which then we learned that all of them are false. One. A uh, low-grade glioma is a benign lesion, therefore it can be followed without any treatment. Secondly, uh, low-grade glioma can be easily and completely resected. Uh, surgical resection results in cure. And fourth, surgery has no effect on uh, outcome. Re uh, really, uh, low-grade glioma is considered as a benign glioma in the past. I'm showing you uh, uh, a book uh, cover uh, from AANS, uh, and as you can see the title, Benign Cerebral uh, Glioma. Uh, when we look to the natural history of these tumors, 59% um, uh, in the five-year survival rate is 59%. A 10 year survival rate is 42% and 20 year survival rate is 26%. In other words, it means that 41% uh, of cases uh, die within five years. 58% uh, of cases die within 10 years and 74% of all cases uh, die uh, within uh, 20 years. Uh, and even after gross total resection, uh, five-year survival rate is not 100% as shown here. Um, uh, we learned that uh, low-grade glioma is not a benign entity. They grow persistently, they recur, and they upgrade. Uh, Low-grade glioma also uh, goes uh, to the malignant, undergoes to the malignant degeneration. Uh, rate of this malignant degeneration is very variable uh, when we look to the literature. What, but today we do accept that within five years, it's 85%. Some, uh, some uh, literature, uh, this uh, case group came, uh, this publication came from UCSF. Uh, malignant degeneration um, it, 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 five, within four years uh, is uh, 20 percent uh, and uh, and this is radiation oncology uh, therapy group uh, um, and uh, as we see within two years 18 percent recurrency and within five years 52 uh, percent recurrency uh, this is true for every uh, department. This is from our department. This case came uh, in 2006 uh, and um, rejected. Uh, it had uh, left uh, temporal, mesial temporal, typical low-grade glioma, uh, but rejected surgical uh, treatment and 2009 came with uh, this huge GBM. The second case, uh, 2001, admitted to our poly outpatient polyclinic with right frontal low-grade glioma, rejected operation, and 2009 came with uh, GBM. 
Uh, this is another case, 2001, admitted to our outpatient clinic with uh, right insular uh, tumor and rejected operation nine years later came with GBM. Uh, today, we do know that uh, gliomas progressively uh, accumulate new uh, mutation uh, and uh, the upgrading uh, of the tumor is not surprise. Uh, and again, including our laboratory uh, also showed that this is because of uh, DNA repair deficiency. Um, uh, it means that if we wait enough, all low-grade gliomas will upgrade and will become GBM. Um, also, uh, with simple MRI follow-up is not an appropriate strategy for management of low-grade glioma because we do need a reliable diagnosis. Uh, a T2 hyperintense non-contrast enhancing mass lesion on MRI is not necessarily a low-grade glioma. We looked our material, uh, 150 cases uh, who had diagnosis of low-grade glioma with their radiological uh, evaluation uh, before operation and after operation, 19% of all these cases who had low-grade glioma diagnosis before operation, 19% of them had grade three uh, um, glioma. Uh, this means that we have to correct our first belief, low-grade glioma is not a benign lesion and it must be treated. Uh, although we do not have in our hands a class one evidence, uh, we do accept that microsurgical resection is the backbone treatment of all gliomas. Uh, and this is shown uh, many years ago that cross total resection uh, can improve survival rate of these uh, lesions. The first who published volumetric study and showed that not only extent of, uh, extent of resection, but also residual tumor volume is more important uh, and residual volume after operation dictates prognosis of patient. Uh, outcome, recurrency, and survival rate have direct correlation with resection of tumor. Uh, our department also showed uh, this, that uh, many um, gross total resected cases have more uh, better survival rate and less upgrading uh, um, percentage. This uh, truth also um, uh, shown with the UCSF group, French glioma group and Norwegian uh, group. Uh, recently, a very nice uh, meta-analysis uh, uh, appeared in the literature, uh, and they uh, compared gross total resected cases with subtotal resected cases, and subtotal resected cases with only biopsies. And as you can see here, gross total resected cases, um, when we compare it sub with subtotal resection, has much better uh, outcome. Uh, then we learn that we have to treat these cases, we have to operate them, and we have to make gross total resection. But this is not uh, easy most of the time uh, because of the difficulty of, um, of uh, tumor and normal tissue uh, border cannot be uh, detected easily in most of the cases. And when we look to the literature, if we operate these kind of cases only with microscope, only one third of the cases can be resected uh, totally, gross totally. This is true, uh, as you see here, she uh, uh, um, uh, here uh, we, you, we do see uh, uh, 
uh, color change. But we, if we look with the ultrasound, uh, we can see um, uh, invaded area goes beyond color change area. Uh, also, uh, surgeon's estimation on extent of resection uh, is highly subjected and we cannot rely uh, on this. When a surgeon said that um, in 25% of cases, there is a residual tumor, uh, MRI, uh, early MRI uh, after operation shows 70% of the cases uh, a residual tumor. And when the neurosurgeon says that there is no residual tumor in 75% of cases, um, MRI shows only 18% of cases has no residual tumor. This shows that we cannot real, rely on um, estimation of a surgeon. And also some surgeons claim that perfect anatomical knowledge is sufficient for low-grade glioma surgery. Uh, this is an, uh, uh, an example. This case operated with a very uh, highly knowledgeable uh, neuroanatomy knowledgeable uh, neurosurgeon, but you do see um, remnant there. This remnant uh, progressively growth and we resected this tumor with interoperative MRI and histopathology revealed grade three uh, astrocytoma. Then we have to correct our second belief, uh, like complete resection is difficult. Um, so then, uh, of course, we do need, because of this, we do need supportive technologies. Uh, intraoperative ultrasound can be used. Uh, and because of the echogenity is different with, with normal tissue uh, and um, tumor tissue, uh, we can discriminate uh, pathological area very easily. This is an easy method, very fast, cost effective, and the most importantly, it is real time. Uh, as you see here, a uh, huge enlarged area with color change. And uh, this is the area that we think that it's tumor. But when we look with uh, uh, ultrasound, surround some of the surrounding areas like uh, two, three, and four uh, are, are also uh, affected. Um, uh, neuro navigation uh, can be used. It's expensive and it's not real time. And after having intraoperative MRI, we showed that uh, when we made craniotomy, uh, at least one centimeter, one and a half centimeter shifting of the brain tissue uh, can appear. Uh, and in this time, uh, pre registered um, neuro navigation has very little effect uh, on accuracy. Intraoperative electrophysiology can be used. This can show us extent of resection, limits of our extent of resection, but it cannot show the, uh, the remnants. Coming to the intraoperative MRI, these two gentlemen, Peter Black and Frank Yoles, uh, uh, described intraoperative MRI. First, um, double donut unit uh, uh, installed in Boston in 1994 and in 95 June, first operation was done. In market, we have low field systems, high field systems and ultra high field systems. Uh, we do have opportunity to use in our department since 2004, uh, uh, three Tesla uh, intraoperative MRI. Uh, this is a uh, headrest and coil system uh, uh, designed only for intraoperative MRI. What information we can get from intraoperative MRI? Very high resolution anatomical image, intraoperative MR spectroscopy, diffusion weighted uh, images, and tractography uh, we can use. Um, some examples from anatomical images. This is a, a right frontal uh, glioma we resected, and you do see remnant there when we made our first choke, check. Uh, then we continued our resection, uh, and again we saw a very small uh, remnant there. 
Again, we continued, and this is the end result. This is another case, um, uh, a low-grade glioma. When we said that we completely rejected, we uh, made our first check, but we do see um, we do see a remnant there, and we continued our rejection, and this is the end result. This is another case. Um, before operation, when we made our first check, there is a remnant there. We continued and rejected, and this is the result. Uh, this is another one, uh, right frontal. Um, when we made our first check, you do see um, hyper intense area uh, there, uh, and we continue to rejection, uh, and this is the uh, result. Um, I'm skipping this. This is the same. Here is the uh, on the first check. There is a remnant there, hyper intense area. We continued, uh, and all this hyper intense area uh, was taken out. Whatever the machine we do use, whatever the strength of the machine is, gross total resection. Uh, can be improved with using intraoperative MRI. This is shown, including our publication here, this is shown uh, in the literature several uh, times. And, and this is our uh, publication, which is the first clinical series with three Tesla. Uh, coming to the MR spectroscopy, this is an insular glioma. Uh, we, after resection, we made our first check uh, and um, on the posterior part of the resection, we, uh, we saw a hyper intense area. We performed MS spectroscopy there and it revealed that it's tumor uh, and we couldn't continue. I will uh, show you on the tractography why we couldn't take that small part. Uh, we couldn't resect that. This is another case uh, after resection of the tumor, there is a hyperintensity around the cavity uh, and we continue to, we performed MR spectroscopy. It showed that it's tumor and histopathology also revealed that uh, it's a tumor. We continued our resection and we came to the second hyperintensity there uh, uh, MR spectroscopy showed that it's not uh, a tumor. Uh, histopathology also showed that it's not tumor, and we didn't continue to the resection. Uh, this is this data also published, and uh, MR's intraoperative MR spectroscopy uh, positive predictive value of it is it's hundred percent, and negative predictive value is seventy five uh, percent. Uh, also, we can uh, use uh, diffusion-weighted image to the distinct uh, tumor and uh, vasogenic edema intraoperatively. And also, we can perform intraoperatively tractography. As I uh, showed this case before, there is a remnant there after the resection of the insular glioma but we performed the intraoperative tractography and we showed that that remnant has very close relationship with the corticospinal tract and we left uh, that part uh, there. And also we uh, showed that after resection of the tumor, um, uh, normal fibers comes to their own uh, place. Does this intraoperative MRI has uh, any impact on patient outcome? Two publication uh, came, uh, one came from uh, Boston group, uh, from Peter Black group. They showed that intraoperative MR uh, uh, cases who are operated with intraoperative MRI has 1.4 times less recurrency and 4.9 times less that uh, during the, their observance. And also Frankfurt groups uh, showed the same uh, result. 
As a result, I can say that intraoperative MRI has a significant uh, positive impact on extent of resection uh, and uh, most likely has an, uh, has an effect, positive effect on uh, survival. We have to, we have to, uh, we have to uh, correct our last uh, uh, belief. Uh, surgery increases survival and decreases uh, risk uh, of recurrency. Uh, but uh, we learned that we have to operate these cases where we have to use some uh, technologies, intraoperative technologies. As you see here before operation, after resection of tumor uh, with intraoperative MRI, uh, six months later, uh, uh, MRI is, looks uh, very nice, but five years later, patient came with huge tumor recurrency and resected again uh, this tumor. This is another case before operation, uh, resected this tumor with intraoperative MRI. Uh, three years um, uh, re uh, MRI is okay. Three and a half years later came with this recurrency. We resected this tumor again uh, and it, it was anaplastic oligo. Uh, this is again another case uh, before operation, uh, resected uh, three months later. Uh, 60 months later, came with um, re recurrency. We performed second operation, but 12 months uh, after second operation, came with huge glioblastoma. Uh, what is the result? We couldn't we couldn't uh, achieve a complete resection, a complete cure in these cases because uh, our misconcept uh, on low-grade gliomas. When we look all publications and uh, books, low-grade gliomas um, shown like uh, a very, um, very uh, 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 surrounded tumor, like meningioma, uh, but uh, it is not. Uh, surrounding area of the tumor, what we see on the MRI, also is affected. Our group, uh, Professor Özduman, showed that uh, surrounding tissue, which appears normal on the MRI, also have uh, IDH mutation. Uh, then uh, Dufo uh, brought diffuse hemispheric glioma uh, term into the literature. This, this, uh, this is not a well circumscribed tumor, but it is diffuse and he brought supratotal resection. If it is diffuse, we have to resect these tumors um, over gross totally. Uh, but his publication showed that uh, even if we perform uh, over gross total resection, 50% of these cases uh, came uh, with recurrency uh, within uh, six years. Uh, this means that increased resection rates, increased survival, we increase resection rates, we increase survival rate of these tumors, but we couldn't achieve a complete cure of these cases. Then we have to understand tumor biology uh, of this pathology. Uh, upgrading of these tumors uh, is very well known uh, for many years, uh, but today we do know this recent publication that these tumors, this glioma uh, group, uh, uh, consists of completely different uh, tumor groups. As you see here, astrocytomas is completely different accumulation, oligos is different on the right below, and on the left side, glioblastoma is completely different group. And also glioblastoma has two um, uh, subgroups within uh, inside. And of course, understanding of IDH mutation uh, increased our knowledge uh, very much in these tumors and also uh, TART uh, mutation uh, is also uh, increased our knowledge in these cases. Today, uh, when we look to the IDH mutation of tumor and TART mutation of the tumor, we can uh, discriminate four 
distinct group, uh, whatever, whatever the who grading system is, um, and this uh, survival and recurrence rate of these tumors dictates by this uh, four um, uh, molecular uh, subgroups. Uh, I, I can say that three fundamental determinants of uh, tumor group, age, anatomical site, and molecular uh, subtype of the tumor. Uh, on the below, you do see grade one, two, three, four uh, morphological grading system that we used to use, uh, but today it has only historical value. Um, uh, determination, the character of the tumor molecularly is the main uh, diagnostic uh, uh, determinant uh, for saying anything about the future. Uh, of the tumor, because uh, we do know that today, 11% of grade two tumors, diagnosed grade two tumors, histopathologically, have character of uh, glioblastoma. Uh, surgical cure, today we do understand and we, we have to accept that surgical cure is not possible in this pathology. And we have to need adjunct treatment uh, in these cases. Today, we do have level one evidence in our hand that low-grade gliomas benefit from adjunct uh, treatment. And also this adjunct treatment included into the guidelines today. Uh, some uh, examples, very few. Uh, this uh, patient uh, had, uh, as you see, right frontal, uh, uh, low-grade glioma, had, uh, after resection, had oligoastrocytoma, uh, histopathological diagnosis, grade two, uh, but uh, molecular subset shows that uh, uh, it had uh, a GBM character, and as you see, uh, within 14 months, uh, it came again, uh, and we lost the patient very, uh, um, few uh, months afterwards. And this is another, uh, another case. Uh, before operation, left frontal mesial low-grade glioma uh, and histopathology, uh, astrocytoma, after operation revealed astrocytoma grade three, but third uh, mutation showed that uh, it's GBM. As you see here, uh, uh, six months later, patient came with uh, recurrency in nine months and 15 months later. Uh, they have very fast uh, course, clinical course. This is what we, what we uh, follow in our department. Uh, when we have a, a glioma case, we, uh, uh, we investigate uh, with uh, neuroradiological investigation done very detailed, then uh, we perform maximal safe resection uh, with using interoperative MRI navigation ultrasound. Of course, we do take uh, some tissue for our tumor bank, uh, but uh, pathological diagnosis, uh, uh, I mean, a grade one, two, three, um, um, hematoxyl and eosin, uh, a grading, um, who grading system, a pathological diagnosis, and molecular grouping done. Uh, and if it is a great IDH mutant tumor, uh, and if patient had some deficits, we do delay a little bit the further therapy. But if patient is okay, uh, we do give up upfront radio uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. If patient is ID8 wild type, uh, exome uh, sequencing uh, done, uh, and then we do give uh, chemotherapy and uh, radiotherapy to these cases. Coming to the conclusion, low-grade gliomas are uh, made up of several tumor types uh, with stereo, uh, typical clinical behavior. This can only be predicted by pathology supported by molecular testing. All diffuse gliomas grow progressively. 
diffuse gliomas undergo malignant degeneration over the time. Follow-up is not a treatment or option for these cases. High resection rates improve survival uh, and recurrency of these tumors. Uh, surgeon's evaluation of resection rate is very subjected, is very subjective, and we cannot rely on it. High resection rate can only be achieved by using interoperative imaging and monitorization. Surgical cure is not possible most of the time in these uh, diffuse hemispheric gliomas, and adjuvant treatment improves survival uh, of the cases. Thank you very much.